That's no dolphin. That's a shark. Now row! Row! Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 ridiculous shark movies. For this list, we're looking at some of the worst, the cheesiest, and the so bad they're good movies that happen to feature sharks. There will be spoilers, so here's your warning. The ridiculous shark thriller genre is quite extensive, so if you know some crazy shark films we left out, please tell us in the comments. Hey Mojoholics! For a chance to win cash prizes, play our live daily trivia challenges every day at 3 p.m. and 8 p.m. Eastern only at watchmojo.com play. Number 20. Deep Blue Sea In this sci-fi horror flick, scientists pursuing a cure for Alzheimer's disease have decided the best test animals for studying the human brain are sharks. Beneath its glassy surface, a world of gliding monsters. And as we all know, the only way to study sharks is in an undersea laboratory. Carter, cut the crap, you're scaring everybody. However, some unwise decisions by said scientists to mess with sharks' minds inadvertently turn them into super intelligent human eaters. So, when a storm damages the labs, folks like Thomas Jane, Saffron Burroughs, and LL Cool J must fight these mutated super sharks for their lives. Oh, and Samuel L. Jackson, whose toughness is sadly not enough to save him from a surprise chomping. So we're not going to fight anymore. We're going to pull together and we're going to find a way to get out of here. First, we're going to seal off this movie. While this movie is implausible, it's also fun with great action sequences, which redeems it in the eyes of fans. Number 19, Santa Jaws. As far as Christmas-themed horror comedy films featuring sharks go, we can safely say this is one of the best. Cody's latest his brainchild. He wants to enter with ruby slippers instead of going dark. Look, man, I just think we could use a little more redemption is all. Young Cody, a wannabe comic book artist, is annoyed at the prospect of spending Christmas with his family. He eases his frustration by drawing a comic called Santa Jaws that features an evil shark with a Santa hat. Cody! <laughs> Unfortunately, it turns out he used a magic pen, so his creation comes to life and starts killing his friends and family. Santa Jaws? Don't you hate it when that happens? <laughs> Uncle Mike is missing. It's Santa Jaws. We need to call the police. Anyway, if you're looking for a movie to watch around the holidays with plenty of crossbows, candy canes, and creative deaths, this one's for you. Ho, 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 you son of a fish. Number 18, Hammerhead, Shark Frenzy, aka Shark Man. Did you know sharks never succumb to disease? Jeffrey Combs was no stranger to playing mad scientists prior to signing on to Hammerhead in 2005. After all, Combs was already a cult sensation, thanks to his performance in the horror classic Reanimator. Who's going to believe a talking head? Get a job in a sideshow. Hammerhead benefits greatly from its casting of Combs as the lead villain, whose obsession with curing his son's cancer leads to him turning the boy into a vicious shark-human hybrid. I created the perfect organism. My god, King, you've lost it. Meanwhile, the crew of Hammerhead takes their cues from Jaws, and show the titular creature only sparingly, using point-of-view shots and brief glimpses to hide the shoddy CGI work. Still, Hammerhead is more competently made than some of the other films on this list, so that's gotta count for something. Everybody, get away from the water! Number 17, Super Shark. Dear God. Buckle up, because we've got yet another example of shoddy CGI here. 2011's Super Shark seemingly couldn't be bothered to attempt anything approaching quality, and it appears to be proud of that fact. Sure, some of the lead actors seem to at least be trying to keep a straight face with the ridiculous material on hand. However, the simple fact is Super Shark rips off its plot from Jaws, adds little to nothing to the genre, and exists in its own vacuum of mindless entertainment for an easily appeased audience. Number 16, Megalodon. Ah! 
There are actually two ridiculous shark movies entitled Megalodon. We're talking about the older one, which was theatrically released in Japan in 2002 and finally released on video in the US in 2004. Heads up, boys. Welcome to my playpen. Even for the early 2000s, the film otherwise known as Sharkzilla contains some embarrassing CGI. It's photoluminescence everywhere. It's like this whole place is lit up with its own energy. Any sign of the drillhead? No, it's gone. Of course, then there's the fact that if the people from this company weren't so eager to get oil at the bottom of the ocean, then the prehistoric fish would never have attacked at all. But I got 150 feet to go. Can't you kick this thing into overdrive? But they do, it does, and the shark is so outraged that it pursues them even after they get back on land. The moral of the story is, never trespass in a shark's domain. No! No! Number 15, Dino Shark. Due to climate change and melting sea ice, a mysterious creature has arisen from the depths of the Arctic Ocean. Is it a dinosaur? A crocodile? A shark? Seriously, what the heck is it? Can I think it over? The movie characters are asking, and you will be too, because this thing, Pleosaur, looks ridiculous. What is, what is that thing? It's got all the standard features of a B-movie monster shark. It's fast, it can evade bullets, and it's hungry for surfers and bikini wearers. Reach my hand! I got you! Come on, man! Who can stop this menace? Hopefully our heroes, which include Eric Balfour as a captain, Eva Hosberger as a marine biologist, and Roger Corman as a scientist. The only vulnerability in the entire skeleton is the orbital cavity. In English read. The eye. Aim for the eye. Although this may sound like a fun, cheesy flick, the consensus seems to be that without much plot or action, it's really not worth the watch. I can't do it. Nah, that's cool. I understand. Number 14, Shark Attack 3, Megalodon. Uh-oh, we've got another Megalodon. The first two Shark Attack movies feature mutated modern day sharks, but in this one, things got prehistoric. After a giant tooth is discovered, a scientific researcher realizes that Megalodons still exist. Moreover, even though they've never bothered anyone before, humanity is in grave danger now. Ancestor of the great white shark. It's supposed to be extinct. Sure enough, it's because some workers laying an undersea cable got attacked by the huge shark that the tooth is found in the first place. And as the movie continues, so too do the megalodon killings. But who can get mad at this adorably ridiculous CGI shark with its huge round eyes? Also, some of these folks are clearly asking to be eaten. If you enjoy hilariously bad movies, Shark Attack 3 is probably worth your time. Number 13, Bait. One major problem with this movie is that it starts like a soap opera. Shut up! Someone watching it without knowing what they were getting into would probably have no idea that sharks were involved at all. We first have to observe our hero Josh have a traumatic experience as a lifeguard. Shark! Shark! switch to working at a grocery store, where he encounters his ex-girlfriend and her new boyfriend, and has to deal with a robbery and someone getting shot. It's almost a relief when a tsunami hits, flooding the grocery store and letting in several sharks. I should know, I built the store. Our hero, his friends, his enemies, and a dog have to fight to escape. Thankfully, though the sharks do attack several people, the dog makes it. Okay, a few humans live too, but they're far less memorable. Number 12, Shark Night. Even though it's only rated PG-13, this film comes disturbingly close to romanticizing violence. Instead of the big, over-the-top chomps you see in most shark thrillers, this one features people, mostly women, struggling and suffering for uncomfortably long scenes. Sarah Fester!
Listen, just because some unhinged people stocked a body of water with sharks so that they can film people being attacked doesn't mean we want to see it. I, I, I can't get in the water. There, there's a shark. <laughs> yeah, I know. Who do you think put him there? This movie really only has two things going for it. First, it features a variety of different shark species, which you don't see too often. And second, there's a dog, and this one also survives. Sure, good boy. Number 11, Malibu Shark Attack, AKA Mega Shark of Malibu. When a tsunami is about to hit a beach in Malibu, the head lifeguard and her friends are suddenly faced with whatever these things are supposed to be. <laughs> they turn out to be living fossil goblin sharks. Goblin sharks are a real species, and while they are strange looking, they're also unlikely to bother people. They only live in very deep oceans. They also don't look that much like the creatures in this film. What is it? It's a goblin shark. However, these shark monsters are probably the best effects this movie has to offer. When it comes to realism, everything else looks even worse. From the tsunami, to the blood, to this guy pretending to maintain his balance and prevent himself from drowning. I can't hold it much longer! On the whole, this film probably isn't so bad it's good. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Number 10, The Meg. Another Megalodon? These are becoming a real problem. What could do that to the rover? I don't think I wanna know. Especially in this movie, which features a ridiculously big but fairly impressive CGI shark. It's like 20, 25 meters. It's Megalodon. Impossible. Working alongside the huge fish, we've got actors Jason Statham and Lee Bing Bing in bigger roles, a character calling himself The Wall, and why is there a little kid in this undersea lab? Anyway, thanks mainly to a memorable cast and a big budget, The Meg is pretty entertaining. It has the action and cool special effects that audience members are probably looking for. Showing this, you ugly bastard. Bear in mind that it's almost two hours long with a number of accidents, betrayals, and plot twists that seem a little out of place in a shark monster movie. It's not about the people you lose. It's about the people you save. Signing off. Got him. Number 9. Jaws The Revenge The iconic original Jaws film didn't need a sequel, let alone three sequels. But sadly, successful films often inspire terrible subsequent installments. The first time's the best for everything. After that, you know too much and nothing's ever quite the same. Jaws 3D, for example, was a lackluster attempt to impress the audience with 3D effects and not much else. Jaws The Revenge, however, is downright bananas. A great white shark, apparently seeking revenge, is determined to hunt down and kill the surviving members of the Brody family. Yeah, really. It chases them from New England's fictional Amity Island to the Bahamas. And in the revised ending of the film released on DVD, someone the shark attacks gets spit out because the shark somehow knew he wasn't a relative. Oh, and the shark definitely roars. Yet, even with this crazy plot, the movie is less entertaining and more of a wet flop all around. You're not gonna do something stupid oh, like dying, are you? Oh, man. I'm way too mean for that. Number eight, Avalanche Sharks. They've tasted human flesh! I know, I've seen it before! Do you like your bad shark movies to buck the aquatic trend for something a bit more original? If so, the next film on our list is for you. Avalanche Sharks froze the ocean over for its take on a fish feeding frenzy, as terribly animated sharks swim through the snow in search of their prey. Get out! Now! 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 now. Go! 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 Oh, that was awesome! <laughs> The overall effect is somewhat similar to 2012 Sand Sharks, 
in that they're moderately well shot during the dialogue scene, but the actual creature effects are so abysmal that they make the end results absolutely impossible to take seriously. Number 7. Mako, The Jaws of Death Hey, what do you know? We have actual sharks featured in our next film. No CGI nonsense here. Mako, The Jaws of Death is also one of the few legitimately enjoyable films on this list, as it actually arrives with an inventive premise. Richard Jekyll's Sonny seems to possess a telepathic connection with sharks, and the film uses this idea to portray them as sympathetic victims of humanity. There I found that I had a decision to make, one that would affect my life from that day on. This is solid drive-in fare all the way, with tense underwater photography and Jekyll's straightforward performance to hold the film together. If you're looking for a 70s shark flick that tries to do something other than ape jaws, then this Mako is for you. All that fuss over a lousy shark. That guy's a nut. Number 6. The Two-Headed Shark Attack The Asylum is well known to schlock movie fans as purveyors of shamelessly low-budget, tie-in cash-grab films known as mockbusters. Now, Two-Headed Shark Attack may not have been riding the coattails of any specific film when it hit rental and VOD in 2012, but it definitely has all of the Asylum's trademark ticked boxes. Mayday, please, anybody there? I'm sinking! Middling to downright bad acting? Check. Gratuitous TNA? Double check. Shark effects that look like the unfinished work of a first-year graphic design student? You betcha. Then again, it is called Two-Headed Shark Attack. So what were we really expecting? Yeah, well, it's been a pleasure, guys, but I'll see ya! Number 5. Jersey Shore Shark Attack Hey, isn't that Vinny stuff? Which Vinny? Vinny no neck. No, bro, Vinny Bananas! Hey, have you ever wondered what an awful shark movie and an awful TV series would do if they somehow inhabited the same universe? No? Well, neither have we, but we're gonna talk about it anyway. Jersey Shore Shark Attack is perhaps the film with the least pride in what it does cranking out a premise that rides on the wave of a popular reality craze and combines it with the laziest shark movie tropes imaginable. Ah! Sharks! The acting is amateur hour, for the most part Jack Scalia still delivers, and the effects are some of the worst ever put to screen, leaving this as one ridiculous shark movie best left for chum. Oh, fire in the hole! Yeah! Number 4. Mega Shark vs. Giant Octopus Captain, I'm picking up a massive underwater disturbance. The Asylum returns yet again on our list, this time with the first in their series that pits a Mega Shark against various mutated creatures in a fight to the finish. This first fight was titled Mega Shark vs. Giant Octopus and delivers pretty much what you'd expect from the straightforward title. It's nowhere near as ridiculous as future installments would get. And hey, it stars pop singer Debbie Gibson and Lorenzo Lamas of Renegade fame. So that's something, right? Honestly, fans of campy shark flicks could do worse than this one. But yeah, we'd still recommend you watch any of the Jaws movies instead. Number 3. Ghost Shark Ladies and gentlemen, the great white shark. Nature's perfect killing machine. Until me and my daddy whipped his ass! <laughs> Alright, we'll give this one an A for effort. Ghost Shark at least tries to do something new with an established genre, which was no mean feat when it hit TV screens in 2013. The ghost effects, to their credit, could have been a lot worse, and it looks like most of the folks involved with this one, from cast to crew, are trying their best to have fun with a silly premise. Does the idea of a dead shark haunting the living make any sense? No, but who cares? Ghost Shark was made to be enjoyed with friends, drinks, and one giant grain of salt. Ghosts are real. As real as the lies this town was built on. Number 2. Sharktopus Oh no! Not like this! Ah! Roger Corman is an industry icon a filmmaker and producer who gave many Hollywood superstars their first shots in the business. 
He's also a man who knew how to make money, thanks to a career producing some of the exploitation world's most enjoyable films. Sharktopus was produced by Corman for the Sci-Fi Network, and was just one in what had been decades of the Corman Factory's conveyor belt of killer beast flicks. <laughs> So, is the film as fun as the man's 70s and 80s output? Well, no. But there is a knowing nod and a wink to the proceedings here that make the idea of a shark and octopus hybrid just that much more enjoyable to watch. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Sharknado Come on, you knew this had to be number one, right? Sure, there had already been tons of low-budget shark disasters prior to the release of Sharknado in 2013, but rarely had one entered the public consciousness in quite the same way. The mainstream media, for one reason or another, picked up on the ludicrous premise of shark-infested water spouts flooding the city of Los Angeles, and earned the film a slow burn of success. The storm's dying down. How can you tell? Not as many sharks flying around. The Sharknado series even managed to earn itself five sequels, which is probably more than anyone at Sci-Fi or The Asylum expected when they greenlit the film for development. Good on you, movie makers! It's feeding time. Welcome to Watch Mojo. Welcome to Watch Mojo. As far as Christmas, as far as, as far as Christmas-themed horror comedy films, <laughs> we can safely say this is one of the best. Young Cody, a oh, young Cody. Buckle up, because we've got yet another example of shoddy CEI here. CEI. 